welcome to bsc statistic students in this class i explain one of the problem and uh, the topic uh, the structural changes due to the addition of a new constraint in the post optimal analysis you see the problem given the following lpp maximize z is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2 subject to the constraints so these are the constraints 2x1 plus x2 less than equal to 40 and x next to greater than less than equal to 24 and obviously x1 x2 uh, and one more constraint i'm sorry one more constraint here yeah and 2x1 plus 3x2 is less than equal to 60 and uh, x1 x2 greater than equal to 0 there are three constraints which are all less than equal to constraints and then now in the question question one if the constraint x1 less than equal to 15 is added to the lpp then discuss the post optimality analysis second one if the constraint less than x1 less than equal to 20 is added then discuss the post optimality analysis so two two straightforward questions uh, have been asked here now you see the solution in the solution first what we want to do you have to solve the given lpp by using as usual simplex procedure by introducing slack variables etc by using as usual simplex procedure and you have to obtain the final optimum simplex table that is uh, once you get the optimum solution then uh, you have to take uh, consider you have to take the last simplex table so this is what the last simplex table after obtaining after applying the uh, simplex procedure this is what the solution we have obtained so this is what the final simplex table uh, it is uh, going to be uh, obtained uh, uh, after uh, calculating after applying the simplex procedure you see here uh, just i'll uh, i'll say few points here y1 y2 and y5 these are the two three uh, uh, vectors are in the basis and uh, uh, the maximum value of z is equal to 64 and all the net evaluations are greater than or equal to 0. Okay, this is what the solution uh, I have written here. Maximize z is equal to 64 and x1 is equal to 16, x1 is equal to 16, x2 is equal to 8. And x3, x4, x5 are equal to 0. Now, if we consider the first problem, if the constraint x1 less than or equal to 15 is added to the given LPP, then obviously the solution is x1 is equal to 16 and x2 is equal to 8 it does not satisfy the addition additional constraint x1 is less than or equal to 50 why 15 why since x1 is equal to 16 x1 less than or equal to 15 uh, is not going to be feasible is going to be not going to be feasible x1 less than or equal to 15 but what about 16 since x1 is equal to 16 therefore the solution is infeasible do you understand the concept therefore the solution is infeasible now what you have to apply we have to apply dual simplex procedure in this case we have to apply dual simplex procedure when the solution whatever the uh, constraint additional constraint x1 less than or equal to 15 is uh, not satisfies then uh, the solution is infeasible and the dual simplex procedure is going to be applied you see here now for which uh, what we want to do uh, the constraint is x1 less than or equal to 15 therefore you have to do as usual add some slack variable x6 greater than or equal to 0 let us consider because up to x5 we have the variables here so i am considering x5 x5 is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, uh, by adding slack variable and converting the inequation into equation then you will get x1 plus x6 is, is, is equal to is equivalent to be 15. Now the optimum solution is going to be changed. What are the changes which are required here? We have to make certain changes. What are the changes needed? You have to add this particular constraint that is x that is uh, x1 plus x6 is equal to 15 after uh, making it to making into equality of constraint you have to add this into the simplex table again you see by slack variable is x6 therefore i am introducing i am taking y6 here 
the values I'm inserting here in the table, that is y1, and the coefficient of x1 is 1, you see, I have introduced here. And I have introduced another vector y6, that is the coefficient of x6, 0, 0, 0, and 1 here in the last one. That is, this is what, this refers to last uh, uh, constraint in which it is going to be inserted at last because lack variable directly produces basis, the y6. So, therefore, one coefficient of x1 remaining all 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and x6 coefficient is 1. Therefore, now you see you can observe this, in this y6, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is nothing but in the basis y6. Okay, now we have, we have to apply the dual simplex procedure. Before that, you see, before applying the simplex procedure, you have to use our common sense. Very first common sense point, you see, you observe y1. y1 is 1, 0, 0, 1. Is it right? It is in the basis, uh, basis vector. It is in the basis matrix. It is one of the basis vector, y1. Therefore, it must be 1, 0, 0, 0. Am I right? Y2 in the basis. Therefore, it is 0, 1, 0, 0. And uh, Y5 in the basis. 0, 0, 1, 0. Y6 in the basis. 0, 0, 0, 1. But except this one, Y1. Y1 is changed. 1, 0, 0, 1. Before going to the calculation, you have to change this particular 1. You have to convert this, this 1 as 0 by using relevant row operation. That is what very, very important calculation in this particular aspect. Before changing, that is, uh, without changing this particular one, which it should not be affected and so that you have to make this is zero. The simple operation is R4 is R4 minus R1. One minus one becomes zero, right? The, if you do the calculations, that is zero minus zero, zero minus one, this becomes minus one later on. The next table, zero minus minus of minus one plus one, zero minus zero, one minus zero is one. Right, so that is what I, I do the uh, relevant row operation um, uh, just by doing the just only the converting the last element as uh, zero because it should satisfy the uh, basis matrix. That's very important. You see, that is what here it is written. Since the vector y1 is in the basis, the corresponding coefficient and the additional constraint must be converted to zero by using relevant row operations, then we get, that is R4, is nothing but R4 minus R1, that is what you have to uh, do. Now you see here, by converting this, by using the relevant row operation R4, R4 minus R1, you, you get this particular uh, table. You observe the last row, Y6 corresponding to Y6. Now it becomes uh, minus 1, okay, of course, what I will tell you again. Mm, by show by sh mm, by showing the uh, first one, I uh, 15 minus 16. Hence, it is minus one. The raw raw operation is R4 minus R1. 15 minus 16 minus one. One minus one zero. Remaining values I have explained. All right. So therefore, you observe the last one, last particular row. It becomes minus one zero zero minus one one zero one. Remaining as usual, remaining or as usual under the calculation. Now you calculate net evaluations and so that etc. etc. again and again. Uh, you, you, you are getting this, uh, you got this, these values 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, etc. The net evaluations, the Z value is 64, etc. which are same. And you have to concentrate on Z and ZJ minus CZ. After calculating this, uh, you have to apply the simplex procedure, dual simplex procedure, I'm sorry, the dual simplex procedure. You have to apply the dual simplex procedure. This is very important. After converting these changes, after uh, changing uh, these, uh, uh, one of the most important crucial step that the basic uh, vector must be 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, you have to convert it by using relevant row operation. That is what we have, we did then. And after that, what you have to do is you have to apply dual simplex procedure. In which dual simplex procedure, we have to calculate xbk, minimum of xbi, xbi less than 0. That is, you have to observe the sign of xbi. Any of xbi is less than 0, you have to consider minimum. That is, more than 1. If you have 
then you have to consider minimum. You have only one minus one. That is the minimum is minus one. Corresponding to y6. Therefore, y6 leaves the basis. That is the procedure. Corresponding to y6, therefore, y6 leaves the basis. That is the procedure. Similarly, now, what you have to calculate which factor enters into the basis. ZR minus CR divided by YKR. This is the calculation. Is equal to maximum of ZJ minus CJ by YKJ, YKJ less than 0. You observe here, these two, only one particular last row. Which are the elements which uh, YKJ less than 0? This is only the one element uh, among all these elements. 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 1. Only negative value is minus 1. There is, therefore, you calculate ZJ minus CJ by YKJ and take maximum. That is for uh, if you have more than one negative. Otherwise, this is the maximum. 1 by minus 1. It is equal to minus 1. This corresponding to maximum value is minus 1 because only one, one value. Is corresponding to y3. It's the corresponding to y3. I show the vector. This is this one, this minus one, this corresponding to y3. Therefore, y3 enters the basis. Therefore, y3 enters into the basis. This is what the procedure. Now, and uh, in which uh, the minus one is the pivotal element. You have to convert remaining all elements, other elements zero and pivotal element to unity. That is by using the relevant row operations. I am considering R1, R2, R3, R4. In the next transportation, uh, next, uh, I am sorry, next uh, 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 simplex table, I consider it is R1 dash, R2 dash, R3 dash, R4 dash. Okay. And by using relevant row operations, uh, I have to change these values. Total element convert to unity and remaining all other elements, zeros. These are the row operations I mentioned here. You know all these procedure, uh, all this procedure. That R4 dash. This is nothing but minus 1 into R4, that is to convert the minus 1, that is unity. You just you multiply with minus 1, you will get it. Okay, right? And similarly, remaining what I write here, the raw operations, just I will explain raw operations. R1 dash, minus 1 into R4 dash plus R1, R2 dash, R4, R4 dash plus R2, R3 dash, minus 1 into R4 dash plus R3. So, these are the relevant row operations I specified to convert remaining all other elements in R1, R2, R3 becomes 0. You see, these are the elements to be converted. R1 is 1 to be, 1 is to be converted 0 in R2 minus 1 in R3 plus 1, which are to be converted as zeros. So, after doing the relevant, these row operations, these row operations, you will get this particular uh, next simplex table. Okay, this is what the simplex table we got and uh, these are the values uh, and so that uh, uh, again you have to calculate Z. We got 63, of course you calculate CB into XB 3 into 15 plus 2 into 9 etc. And 0 into 3 plus 0 into 1. So, we get we get Z, Z value is equal to 63. And uh, you have to also, uh, you are supposed to calculate ZJ minus CJ that is uh, uh, ZJ minus CJ net evaluations. We got these values 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1. And uh, X, you, now you have to observe the sign of XBI that is uh, 15 uh, in here in the XB 15, 9, 3, 1. So, all are positive. Net evaluations are positive, XBI values are positive. Therefore, this is the end of the solution. We got the solution. What is the solution? We uh, the optimum value that is maximum value of Z is equal to 63. And x1 is equal to 15, x2 is equal to 9, and x3 is equal to 1. Okay, these are the uh, final values, uh, uh, which means uh, the optimum solution is, uh, is obtained. Hence, the optimum solution is obtained for the post optimal analysis, which means uh, after uh, introducing a new constraint, this is what the solution. Okay, right. The new optimum solution is maximize z is equal to 63 and x1 15 x1 is equal to 15 and uh, x2 is equal to 9, x3 1 and uh, x5 is equal to 3 of course it is not required and this is what the solution for uh, new linear programming problem after introducing the new constraint. So, this is what uh, uh, post optimal analysis uh, which we have studied. Now, coming to the second problem if the constraints x1 less than or equal to 20 is added. 
Then the optimum solution satisfies the additional constant x1 less than or equal to 20. Since x1 is equal to 16, 16 less than less than 20. Therefore, uh, it satisfies the x1 less than or equal to 20 satisfies the solution, optimum solution of the given linear programming problem. Once you have calculated the optimum solution, optimum solution gives you x1 is equal to 16 and 8. I have explained very first. You can observe here. This is what the solution at first uh, by solving the given linear programming problem. Maximize z is equal to 64. x1 is equal to 16. x is equal to 8. By using this particular solution, that is by, uh, by taking this constraint, x1 is less than or equal to 20, it is going to be added, then x1 is equal to 16, which is less than 20. Therefore, it satisfies whichever constraint x1 less than or equal to 20, it is going to be added, it, is, it satisfies uh, the solution, optimum solution of the uh, given linear programming problem. Therefore, optimum solution do, do not change. Whichever the opti solution, optimum solution we have considered for the uh, old linear programming problem uh, before the change and after the change also after the change which means addition of the one particular constant x1 less than or equal to 20 then uh, optimum solution is not going to be changed that is what uh, our uh, uh, second uh, problem second question in the constraints in the addition of the constraint so these are the uh, two particular uh, problems you have considered in the addition of the constraint, addition of a new constraint, the two different cases uh, we have studied separately. Hope you understand. This is the procedure of, uh, of doing the, of observing what are the structural changes uh, due to the addition of the constraint of any kind of linear programming problem in the post-optimal analysis. This is what the post-optimal analysis, uh, this is the procedure how to do the post-optimal analysis, post-optimality for addition of a constraint. Thank you. Thank you so much.